In this video, we are going to look at the exact truth behind the Costco Kirkland V3 golf balls. Now, we're going to go into what they perform like by real golfers. Also, what is the data? Because we don't want you going around the golf course thinking, you know what, I've got a bargain here. I've got a golf ball that is exactly like a Pro V for a fraction of the price if it isn't. Yeah, and when we were planning this video, I was quite surprised by the reviews of these golf balls. If I'm honest, some of them have even said that it's a bit of a con, what is what? going on here. An actual, like, like, as in, like, Kirkland aren't selling what the, say they're selling, con. Well, because, it... sorry to interrupt, like, because if I think of a Kirkland golf ball, I think of that golf ball as a golf ball that is pitched as, here's a Pro V... Here's what we have is as a Pro V and it's cheaper. Now, whether that's Kirkland, whether that's media, whether that's us as golfers, whatever it is, it still gives that perception that we're buying the current of a Pro V. It does. And that's where the lines get a little bit blurred. Now, I played with some Kirkland golf balls uh, at the May. I played around there and it was a windy day. Okay, so... There was quite a few holes where I'm hitting into the wind. And this is where... Wait, so, into, we're talking driver and iron shots here. Yeah, exactly. And this is where I saw a little bit of difference in, in what, of what I would normally see if I was using the Pro V1. Because from the data, from what we see, these golf balls are... While they go a similar distance in the data, they are quite a bit spinnier. Okay, so the, the amount of revolutions per minute they make yes. is a lot more. Now, yes. obviously, if, if you are a high swing speed player who's buying these golf balls... Which I am. <laughs> all right. You just lost a load of subscribers. You're a big headed this mate. I'm joking. Turn off. He doesn't, doesn't see me there. <laughs> no, but so essentially, if you're a high swing speed player, you're going to generate a lot of spin naturally, yeah. especially with driver or even so with irons, right? You get that into the wind, that's going to multiply... Yeah that up okay so you're almost saying like the data says one thing but when you put it in a scenario on the course it could be even worse because of this yeah exactly like it when i was hitting into the wind it was, was that going like yeah even if i was trying to keep it low i was okay. struggling to keep it low well interesting that you've seen that so what is the kirkland version 3 golf ball and what does it claim to have well the guys in the golf insider said this right ball flight medium to high it is a compression medium to high, minus 90. Number of pieces, three. We see that in a lot of premium gold balls now. Three-piece gold ball. Colors available only in white. Interestingly, this is the bit that I find really interestingly, low spin, medium feel. Yeah. So if you're saying, and I think there's some of the data here supporting this, that it's a, it, it, they're saying it's low, but it's coming out higher than a Pro V, yeah. Then this is where the line's been a bit blurred. Yes. Okay, so let's dive into the screenshots here. You'll be able to see these on the screen. We're going to look at the distance screenshots. So first off in the left corner, we've got the Kirkland average distance, and we've got 243 to 246 difference between Pro V and Kirkland. Okay, three yards is negligible. Five yards on the next distance chart, nothing. I mean, I'm not even too worried about that. But the, what I am seeing here in the far right is the difference in spin. Now, again, this golf ball, why we're seeing it is a little bit of a con here is the fact that it's pitched as a lower spinning golf ball like a Pro V1 where we're sort of comparing this and looking at going, well, this golf ball is the equivalent of it, but yet it's spinning more. Yeah. And so you're buying this thinking you're getting a Pro V1, but it's yeah. spinning more than a Pro V1. Yeah, and what needs to be taken into account as a golfer that's going out and buying these golf balls is... Where's this data been done? I.e., is it been collated in a simulator where the conditions are perfect? Because guess what? You very rarely play in conditions that are perfect. So here's a question. Would you play them again? Um, well, we're going to touch on this at the end, towards the end of the video because there would be a reason why I would play them again. Um, because, yes... More factors go into just how it performs, right? Exactly. Right. Yes, they don't necessarily perform the same as a Pro V1, but I'm sure a lot of people out there could guess while we're talking about this now and spitballing the reason why I would play these golf balls again. And if you are watching, have a guess. Get down in the comments and, and say why you think that I would play these golf balls again before we get to the end of the video because there is obviously a reason. There is a reason why they are in the market. Yeah. There's a clue. 
Okay, Josh, so we've looked at the data. Let's go into your round a little bit further. You mentioned it was climbing a little bit when yeah. you're hitting shots. Yeah, and that's where, like I said before, you're trying to play that, that sort of penetrating ball fight because you have to, and this, it just felt like it was spinning up. However, saying that, that's where it felt like not as not as premium. But then when we get close to the green, it was almost like it was flipping back and it was more like a proof one because I seemed to have or felt like I had that more control. So when like you got close to the green, the three priests, you're a thing, or the premium sort of feel, the softness, the control of the spin was like you you had your Provi in your hand. Yeah, it was like the ball came into its element in, in that sense. And I guess that's because you are taking the elements out of it. You're not playing the same kinds of shots and you're that they don't come into as much. It's that feel aspect yeah. of the game. And that's where this did perform. This is the thing that I feel with like a, a, a budget premium golf ball in the sense of that they're all like sort of mid compression rating, but for lower swing speed players, they perform great. Yeah. But for a better player who generates a lot more ball speed, it somehow, whatever technology Pro V1 put in compared to this, it doesn't seem to have the same effect. Yeah, exactly. It seems like that's where they're struggling to bridge that gap. I wonder why, though. Like, It's an interesting thing, isn't it? I think I, I, when I've tried budget gold balls in the past and done reviews on them, I've seen the same things of, oh, it seems to climb a lot more. Yeah, yeah. And and that, that like I said, that, that's where they're going to struggle to bridge the gap. But you then got to weigh it up and say, well, that's why it's maybe affordable. Yeah, okay, so it can't can't be... Yeah, is it ever going to beat the Pro V1? Is it ever going to be exactly the same? Probably not. Interesting, though. Very interesting. Okay, so let's dive into these spin numbers a little bit more. So, the data versus the Pro V1 show that the Kirkland Gold Balls spin more than the Pro V1 off the tee. A 10% increase, meaning a little loss in distance, but not an absolute killer. Can they compete with a premium golf ball with this spin performance around the greens? I think that's what we're sort of saying here. Josh says, around the greens, this is where it matches it. Exactly. But when the golf ball is under more compression, i.e. A, a longer shot, that's where this starts to drop off. Yeah, and the test that they did, so this is again from Golf Insiders, their first test was short chip. And the spin was, they've said, not great on this short shot. Now, that's a little bit different to how I felt with it but yeah i think equally, you, yeah. it depends on the shot you're trying to play if you're trying to get a shot that spins a lot like i.e and stop maybe this isn't the ball for you but equally if you're just hitting a short pitch and you want it to roll out a bit it, do you know what i mean it's all this is great the data is brilliant and what they've tried is brilliant but it's all very subjective yeah i think when you're talking about chipping as well there's a lot that comes into it like the ground the wetness the strike and I think, again, I don't want to say that there's not, not poo-pooing it completely, but this golf ball, potentially, when you are in the elements and you are subjective to these things, that, that's when it, it might not be as good. Yeah, and they've said that the ball was rolling out six or seven feet further than they expected, even with, with the greens being the pace where they said they're quite quick. The second test that they did was a pitching wedge from around 125 yards, and they felt that the ball was stopping a lot quicker because of the, the overall spin was better. And they were testing these against sort of titleist version of the affordable premium so like the velocity. The, vo the velocity, yeah. yeah. So what, what we're saying here in this video is they're comparing it to the Pro V1, in the distance and how it performs spin wise but actually as an affordable golf ball how does it perform in that range around the greens yeah yeah and it's one of them where again this is but i don't understand golf. why a, a golf insiders would do that because uh, I mean, yes it's an affordable golf ball but the velocity performs different to a pro v this gold ball is pitched on the market as a pro v1 competitor so overall let's summarize this the performance josh so Golf Insiders found that it was a, it was spinnier. Iron shots travelled similar distance, a little bit shorter, 10% increase in spin with driver, and a little bit of a drop-off. That was the summary. On the golf course, they did see a little bit of roll, and they found that the golf ball didn't perform as well around the greens. You found it a little bit different. You found that around the greens, it was good performing, and yeah. sort of went back to that premium sort of element of a golf ball. Yeah, and, but I will stress on that, that is very subjective as how you play your chip shots, the chip shots you want to play, yeah. the way you play your golf game. So read into that as much as you want, but also you got to take it with a little bit of pinch of salt because everyone plays golf differently. Yeah. So the final part of this video is value. Now, golf's expensive, right? So 
with it being expensive, value for money is going to come into buying a golf ball and going to come into buying any piece of equipment that you're thinking of buying. Now, for two dozen golf balls, these come in at $32.98. So value for money, it just wipes the floor. I think you're looking at 45, 50 quid for a dozen Pro Views yeah. now. And, and that's, it. guess what? If you guess right, this was the reason why I would buy them. That is why I would go back to these golf balls. And look, I am I am a big advocate of playing a golf ball all year round. I know some people play a different ball in the summer than they do the winter. If you do that, this is a good option for you, I believe. But even though, so you you still buy them, so the, the price point's still good yeah. for the fact that even though we're saying that because this is pitched at a mid-spin golf ball with penetrating flight and it's producing higher spin than the Pro V1, so essentially a little bit of a con, you still go and buy it. I think so, yeah, because it's manageable. It's something that you can... The, value, the, the price, the of, price it of it yeah. weighs, outweighs the fact that you feel like potentially being cheated a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and look, I'll hold my hands up. As golfers, we all have those periods that we go through when you're absolutely shelling, when they left, right, all over the place. No matter how good you are as a golfer, you go through those periods. This would be the time that you may go and buy some of these because guess what? couple quid a ball as opposed to three, four pound a ball yeah. makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Now, one thing I would say is obviously tight list are the market leaders. Yeah. And I really do think Kirkland have nailed that affordability point yeah. of view. Like you look at any premium gold ball. One thing is like really worth mentioning here. It's got a urethane cover and almost any gold balls have a urethane cover. They are extremely expensive. Yeah. And somehow Kirkland managed to produce something that isn't that expensive but potentially the trade-off is that you aren't going to get the exact same characteristics as the Pro V. Well, you can't, can you? No. You, they always say you pay for what you get. No. Obviously, with Kirkland, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just think that if you're, if you understand that trade-off and you understand what you're getting, it's perfect for you. But don't go and buy it thinking you're getting exactly the same as the Pro V One. That's where the con bit yeah. comes into it because you aren't. It's close. But it isn't there. But we're saying right now, value for money, the trade-off of the little slight con is still worth buying it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell with any of these videos. If you've ever thought about testing a Kirkland Gold Ball or having a Kirkland Gold Ball in your bag, we'd love to know what your experience is with it too.